can a Raspberry 5 really run AI? Let's build one and find out. Right, we're turning this wee Raspberry Pi into an AI workhorse. And I, it's getting an AI hat for a bit of extra smarts. We'll build it, set it up, and get it ready to tackle AI jobs step by step. By the end, you'll be ready to fire up your own Pi for some clever work. Let's crack on. Okay, let's get started with the unboxing. Here we have a Raspberry Pi 5 in a nice little red box. Let's have a look inside, see what's in there. Very nice. We have the latest powerhouse from Raspberry Pi. Let's see what we get on the board. Well, slightly different layout from uh, the Raspberry Pi 4. There's underneath there's the SD micro SD port. That's the processor I just uh, touched. What else have we got in here? There's two high speed and two standard USB A ports. There's a gigabit Ethernet. Uh, here we have the GPIO. Uh, there's the PCIe 2 stroke 3. Um, port, uh, dual HDMI outputs, micro or mini SD, I'm not sure, then there's power supply and there's two camera ports. So pretty fully featured. Uh, one thing to remember of note is uh, there's a PoE header there and um, we also have the fan header there. Um, but what I was also going to mention is there's no onboard H.264 hardware encoder on the Raspberry Pi 5. They've got rid of that. Where's the add in the 4? Okay, and ready? Go! Okay, now we're speeding things up. We've got the active cooler installed. Here's the Raspberry Pi AI hat. The 13 tops version. Uh, it comes in a nice uh, anti-static bag. You've got some headers and GPL header extensions. Let's put the header extension on. Boom, there we go. Let's screw in these uh, risers. Make sure you use the uh, longer screws. But I made a mistake here, which I will mention later. And we take out the AI hat. Oh, it was very nice. Got uh, the GPIO riser extensions. There we have the PCIe 3. Remember, uh, PCIe 3 mode is actually auto enabled when you use the AI hat version so you don't need to go into Raspberry Pi config to change it. So here we have me uh, hat putting onto the risers, screw in the top, make sure you use the shorter screws uh, on the top. There we go, one more screw needed as as. So now we're looking complete and we're going to open the case that we're going to use. I think this is a black case, yes. So let's open up the case and see what we got. It's slightly different from the Raspberry Pi 4 cases if you're familiar with them. And uh, this one actually comes with a fan. However, we're not going to use the fan because we've already got the active cooler and the uh, AI hat installed. So there's no space for it. Let's take off this little uh, top and then you can see the fan that you get. Uh, you can clip that out, push it out, there we go. And there's a little neat little envelope inside uh, which includes uh, rubber pads and a heat sink which you can stick onto the CPU if you're not, uh, not using any active cooler or anything. You could actually potentially stick this on the AI hat but uh, I've opted not to. So yeah, stuck these little uh, rubber pads on um, and it just drops in. Now I've, you actually can screw it from the bottom so I incorrectly screwed in the screws earlier so I had to take them out and uh, re-screw them in the bottom. Uh, this is also useless, that top. Uh, this is also not needed. So there we go. All done. Ready for action. So next step is we're going to install 
some software onto the Raspberry Pi and set it up. So we need to flash a micro SD card and then we need to um, install and set up the device to perform AI workloads. Okay, let's set the machine up. Go to raspberrypi.com software, download for Mac OS. This is an imager, so we can burn the micro SD card. We can drag that here to install into the applications on the Mac. And then we can open up the imager, select uh, the Raspberry Pi 5. You can select an operating system. Actually, you can go to other and go for OS Lite uh, with a desktop environment if you're running it headless, as I like to do. Uh, choose storage. We have uh, the generic SD card. I'm uh, going to have some settings, Glenfiddich, name them always after whiskies, and some basic SSH username password accounts. It also has some uh, public keys that it copies by default. Uh, then we just set that to burn and off it goes. Verifies. Then we can SSH in. Uh, apt update and apt upgrade, uh, just to update everything to the most recent version. Uh, ask if you want to overwrite in the RAM FS, I just said yes. There we go. Uh, next step is to load the, well, I should need to check the firmware versions after 2023, it is, so that's okay. We could update it, but I decided not to. And now we reboot the machine. SSH in again. And then we need to install the Halo software, sudo apt to get install Halo all. Or sudo, or sudo apt to install Halo all, should I say. Uh, this takes a little while, I've speeded, sped this up for you guys. And we can run this Halo RTCLR FW control identify to confirm that it's running. Remember to reboot the machine before running this command, otherwise you'll get nothing. And I'm creating a projects directory and I'm going to clone some Halo Raspberry Pi, Halo RPI 5 examples. Uh, then you run the install.sh script, which uh, again does quite a lot of installing, it takes quite a long time. Um, there is unfortunately an issue here where it complains about Meson not being installed, so you need to actually go into the uh, virtual environment and install Meson manually. Uh, then you can then you try again with installed sh and it will error out again uh, this time complaining about ninja being missing uh, so i'm not sure why those are dependencies are not included in the install script but i just installed them manually then run installed sh for a third time third time to charm and then boom okay so oh, installation uh, i could fix the spelling there and now we can go to the virtual environment and run Python basic pipelines detection simple, which will run, it looks like Yolo V6 nano uh, architecture uh, on a test, uh, test video. And this is what the video looks like. So there we go, we've gone from zero to hero in about three and a half minutes. So looking good. There we have per people, bicycles, cars, um, yeah, looks good. Um, the next step is to see what we can actually build with this. Uh, let's try running a pre-trained model on another video. Um, maybe we can try and create our own GStreamer pipeline to save videos instead of putting to display. Uh, then from there, I'd like to try and train our own model and then convert that to the HEF format uh, work out how to do that and then let's run our model on some trained uh, some some other videos to see what what we get with the overlays and then let's try and see uh, if we can do some real time stuff with uh, attaching cameras and see how how easy or hard that is um, and then I think you should even try even further and see what sort of edge project thing we can make. I'm quite keen to just make a dash cam uh, number plate recognition tool.
that I can mount in my car, drive around and just log number plates of, of cars that I drive past. Okie dokie. Bye for now.